you didn't know what questions to ask because you don't know what you're doing. It's really technical, but like I said, you can fly that plane. I promise you, you can, but you have to have somebody teach you how what's going on back there. If you flip on a bunch of buttons, you're like, oh, I can't fly. You can, you just have to have somebody teach you how to do that. And then you have to taxi down the runway. Microphone check, one, two, what is this? You're now listening to a brand new episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. Look what you done started. Talk to him. Attorney, high-performance coach, and speaker Cherie Prince asks hard questions to really get to the bottom of what makes entrepreneurs tick. From starting a business, marketing, strategies, and the ins and outs of their industries. We talk everything from book recommendations, lifestyle hacks, and everything possible to get you inspired and motivated to build your own business. The Play Big Faster podcast starts now. Let's go. Welcome to another episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. I'm your host, Cherie Prince, and we are joined today by Matt Shields. Matt is the co-founder of Chime House Media, and also he has some good information to give us today about his system for improving your podcast. Matt, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me. Appreciate it. So tell us, when did you begin podcasting? So I don't actually have a podcast of my own. I've been a guest on several, but we got into the niche through a friend of ours. He, his name is Adam Shively, he teaches podcasting business school. But he proposed a challenge to us of, he basically said, I want to see how little I can spend and get tangible results using Facebook and Instagram ads. We accepted the challenge and we're stunned to find out that our audience building strategy that we've been using with clients for years works perfectly for podcasters, especially business owners who are using podcasts as an authority play. Essentially... With podcasting, it's a lot of it that's taught in the industry to grow your podcast quickly is to cross promote or use organic strategies or different things like that. We've been using Facebook and Instagram to sell online courses for a really long time, but we've just recently tapped into the podcasting space because it's getting harder and harder to sell to a cold audience with a small budget. So you have to use this part of this form of marketing for what it's worth. And what it's worth is it is amazing for audience building. The reason it's great for podcasting is because podcasters, your job is to create content all the time, right? So showing that content to new people and then continuing to show them more of your content until they either stop interacting with you because they get sick of hearing it or you're not exactly talking directly to them or they stick with you and love what you're saying, and then you can hit them with the ask. So join my email list, download this podcast, all that stuff. And you can do this super cost effectively. That was my next question, because anytime someone says ads, if I'm a new business, thinking about ads and ad spend, it seems like it may be expensive. Tell us a little bit about how you manage costs and some of the things that you do um, when working with Facebook and Instagram ads. Yeah, if you're a new business, ads might not be for you, but eventually you're going to have to get there because people have to know who you are, right? You can't just sell to a cold audience and unless you have an absolutely perfect product and your audience is super niche down, you still have to be able to find them on the internet. So we manage costs through basically looking at the hierarchy of how much it costs to achieve a certain result, right? So if you try to sell, I'm going to use this a course creator for example, you try to sell a $2,000 course and no one knows who you are, it's going to be really difficult and very expensive to get someone to find that person on the internet to go all the way through your sales process and buy from you without having to warm them up or get them to know you and build that the like and trust factor. The best way to use the platform right now, if you have a small budget is awareness, right? Essentially we use content to filter audiences because they took away, you can't get as granular with your targeting anymore. So if you have a podcast and you say you serve uh, divorce lawyers, okay, this is an example. If they take away the targeting option for divorce lawyers and I have to target just lawyers, you're going to have to filter that audience somehow. And podcasts are perfect for that because there's a great way to cut through the time that it takes to build that no can trust online is to listen to someone speak on a subject matter for half an hour. 
it's great rather than consuming a bunch of six second clips or reading a bunch of things that you wrote. I'll just listen to you speak for half an hour. It's super easy. I can download a podcast and listen to it while I'm doing anything else. So it works really well. So what we do to manage costs is we ask for easy asks. So engagement, we ask for likes, shares, comments, things like that, and move them on down the line, keep everything on the platform. Because the whole purpose of social media is to keep you on the platform longer so they can show you advertising. That's the very, very top of a sales funnel is just getting someone's attention and then gauging their interest in what you have to say. When I'm talking to people about ads, you have two schools of thoughts. You have those people that are like super Facebook ads, and then you have other people who are Google ads. Do you have any recommendations or just pros and cons about either or? Yeah. So it, they're both good. We're never all your eggs in one basket people. Facebook and Instagram are very cost effective when it comes to audience building. Google is very good if someone's searching exactly for what you're selling. YouTube is really tremendous for podcasters as well, just because their analytics. I personally am a huge fan of Google's analytics because it's free and it's, it works really well. Facebook, though, if you're trying to build a community, build an audience, and you want to retarget that audience over and over again, it's a fantastic use, especially Instagram. They all have pros and cons, but you shouldn't just put all your money into any one of them. Now, when I was reading about some of the work that you do, you guys have a proven system. And when you say proven, that means you've worked with other people, you've seen it happen. But if I was someone who was looking to work with you, what are the different ways that I'd be able to work with you? It just depends on your personality and your bandwidth. I hate to use that word over and over again because it was used too much during COVID. But we have options for everyone. So those people who don't want, don't have any sort of desire to learn this, and they just want to get their time back, we have done for you ad service. If you want to learn how to do this and you need a little bit of handholding, we have one-on-one -on -one coaching. If you are a complete DIYer and you're completely independent and you can learn how to do this on your own, we have a course for that. There's several different ways that you can work with us and any of them are good. I can either teach you how to do this or I can just do this for you. What are the top three mistakes people are making when they attempt to try to do it themselves? Facebook itself. So when I talk about Facebook, I'm talking about Facebook and Instagram. I just refuse to call it meta. Like I just haven't called it that. When you go into Facebook ads manager, it's a bit like walking into an airplane cockpit. There's a lot of knobs to turn on and off and a lot of things that you think you should be paying attention to. And even if you go on YouTube and look up how to do this, it changes day to day. So if you do go on YouTube and you try to learn how to do this, you need to pay close attention to the date that video was published because it might not be the same at all. And some of those tactics might not work from two weeks ago. So if you're in there every day, it's fine, but there are certain things that work evergreen. And now if we, if you take our course, we don't teach people how to do a full blown sales funnel for a reason, because we would have to go in there and update it every time Facebook makes a change. And we have to keep up to date on when Facebook makes changes and they don't exactly announce that. They do not. The biggest, <laughs> yeah. The biggest mistake I see people make is Facebook business manager has a facade profile. So when you go in there and you say, if you click on ads, it takes you this thing where it's easy to use. You go in there and you're like, oh, I can run an ad. It's a super easy profile to do, but that's not actually how you do that. I wish I could show you, but... It, they have a facade to where they make it easy for you to run an ad, but they don't give you all the options that are available if you actually go into the back end on Ads Manager. So they'll put $2 a day into ads, not have any strategy behind how they target or make exclusion audiences or anything like that. They don't consider a lot of things. And then they give it a month and go, oh, it didn't work for me. Or they worked with an Ads Manager and they're like, oh, it didn't work for me either. And this is why. Like I gave them a bunch of my money and I just felt like I blew it. It's because one, you didn't know what questions to ask because you don't know what you're doing. It's really technical. But like I said, you can fly that plane. I promise you, you can. But you have to have somebody teach you how, what's going on back there. If you flip on a bunch of buttons, you're like, oh, I can't fly. You can. You just have to have somebody teach you how to do that. And then you have to taxi down the runway. That's the best analogy I can give you but they just try to do it themselves without any sort of guidance. And they just think that it's not for them. It doesn't work. 
there's so many options and you can get so technical with it. And without any sort of tested strategy, you're just testing things out and it's designed to waste your money unless you know what you're doing. Yeah, that's one mistake. What are some other mistakes? Other mistakes are simple stuff. It's not connected correctly. You're sending someone to a landing page. You're sending them off the platform first. You're trying to get sales immediately. You have to understand that like you and listening to gurus online about, oh, you just need to run ads. Here's what to do. You just run this simple sales funnel. The fact that they're so obtuse, not to mention that they have 2 million people following them and that's, that's it. That's the reason they're a success. Yeah, it's perfect. Some of those online gurus can sell anything they want because they just have a loyal following of people and whatever they say, but they that's on them. That's a great, that's great for them. But listening to online gurus and thinking that it's just going to work for you right off the bat without any sort of testing or strategy applied or any sort of like logic applied to it, it is a huge mistake people make. You mentioned that the mistake was trying to send them off the platform. Okay, let's break that down because if you're trying to sell a product, the first thing you think about, I just want to link to my landing page. Why is that a mistake? It has to do with analytics. So if you're, if you're sending people off of the platform using organic strategies, Facebook's going to bury your posts. So they don't like clickbaity stuff. They don't like all that. But if you're running an ad and you have a call to action on that ad, first of all, you have to send people off the platform, but you have to understand that if they are an Apple user, you're not getting their data because of the iOS 14 and a half update in 2021. You're not getting any of that. So your data for your analytics, if you're using analytics, you can't retarget those people that go to your website. It's not communicating with ads manager. And it's a lot, it's a lot more expensive to try to get somebody to go to your website and buy from you than it is to just keep them on the platform, even get them on an email list, explore other things that way. You have to scale. It's a long term. If you don't have a super high budget, if you have under 10 grand a month to spend on ads, you have to be super efficient with your ad spend. You just do. And the way to do that is make it a long game. So you have to get your stuff out to new people constantly. You have to nurture those people along the way. You have to give them some sort of value on the way for nothing so that they can join an email list, something like that. They have to opt in. They have to want to hear from you. And then you hit them with other forms of marketing because it's going to take multiple touch points. It's going to take a lot of touch points to try to make a sale, especially on a high ticket offer or something like that. So you have to build this sort of provenance online and build up your know and trust factor. That authority play is what I'm talking about. So this is why podcasting is perfect for that. Get them to listen to your podcast. And then on the back end of your podcast, after you've built that authority, then you can hit them with the ask. But you can't just ask people out of the blue, like, hey, buy my $2,000 course. Who are you? And what do you mean? I know you said that you had multiple options for people to work with you. What does one-on-one look like? What is the time commitment? We usually do two meetings a month or whatever it is that you need. We just, we tailor it basically to your need, but it's all Chime House Media is me and my wife. So if we work one-on-one and you learn how to do this and where you take the mentorship, we are exactly doing that. I will baby bird you through this process, right? If you work with us done for you ad service, we basically become part of your team. So we run ads for you. We give you analytics. We give you breakdown. We talk about what's working, what's not working. And we give you advice on what sort of content to create next, what we would like to see, what we would like to test, because it's just, that's the name of the game. You have to keep testing. You always have to keep testing because you're trying to sell based on behavioral data on a social media website that's literally affected by everything, everything in the world right now. So the people who are advertising right this minute have to contend with world news, war, election, everything else that's going on in the United States. And that's not even counting like the rest of the global atmosphere here, but you just have to keep testing and keep monitoring, but you got to know how to do that properly. Well, I know you said the long game and 30 days may not be enough. Minimally, how long do you think I need to stay in it before I have data that you can actually look at and analyze and give me a plan to go forward? I'd say minimum 90 days, but we do six month contracts because we are gauging interest. We're doing a lot of testing. 
And even if you have a sold product before, it doesn't necessarily mean if you launch a new product, even if you've launched a product before, or let's say you have services and you're launching to a new audience, we have to test messaging. It's you, you have to test different elements of the ad. You have to see if the message that you're putting out there resonates with the audience that we're targeting. So even if you know your audience perfectly, finding them on the internet is a totally different thing. Wow. If you had one piece of advice that you could share with someone on how to play big faster in the Facebook, Instagram ad game, what would it be? Play big faster, meaning like you want to try to achieve results as quickly as possible. Yes, as quickly as possible. Okay. If you start, if you're looking at ads, say you have a service-based business, so we can whittle this down. This is very tailored. This is, it's all bespoke. So if you have a service-based business and you have content from, you're sitting on a bunch of content from your podcasts, things like that. If you post consistently, meaning three or four times a week and use our audience building strategy, right? So we're getting things out to new people constantly. We're getting actions for less than a penny. So everybody who interacts with you, you're getting them for less than a penny. And everyone who interacts with you can now be retargeted. So we can retarget those people, show them more of your content until they either love you or hate you because you don't want 10,000 maybes hanging around, right? That's the whole point. Until they get sick of you or they love what you're saying. You can do that within 30, 60, 90 days. And depending on what your action you want it to be, either they join your email list, they download your podcast more or whatever, getting sales shouldn't be the immediate goal. I know that's it's easy to say when it's not my money, but we do the same thing for ourselves. It's just you have to warm people up and you have to find that right audience and you have to make sure your messaging is resonating with those people. But just posting consistently, sticking to your podcast, like cutting good content, all that stuff, and then getting it out to new people and nurturing those people. You can do that very quickly and very cost effectively, but it's not a get rich quick game. It's hard unless you have a lot of money and a lot of clout. Get rich is hard to achieve. Did you say that you can run ads for less than a penny? So we achieve results for less than a penny. So a result is meaning like an engagement. So we can, so say we have a minimum ad spend of $10 a day, which we do. So our audience building strategy, we can employ for, $10 a day, but you can reach, we've seen people reach 30,000 people in a month or more. So it just depends on what the ask is. And the ask is just interact with this piece of content. And if your content resonates with the audience that you target easily under a penny. So every one of those 30,000 people might not buy from you, but they are now retargetable. So you can retarget those people, keep them in your world. And then after the people who continue to interact with you after 30, 60, 90 days are more likely to work with you because they're, they've stayed interested longer. That's the gist of this. And we would suggest we've done this with our clients who have $300 a month in ad spend or $30,000 a month in ad spend. This same strategy used to filter audiences because you can't get as granular anymore with targeting. Wow. Man, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. No problem. Thank you so much for having me. I appreciate it. Now, look, don't go before you tell people how to find you. Yeah. So we are on Facebook and Instagram at Chime House Media. Uh, Our website is chimehousemedia.com. If you're interested in our course, hit us up. Or if you want done for you service, we also have a VIP day option where I'll teach you this in one day. Uh, It's chimehousemedia.com forward slash podcast. Or just get in touch with us anyway. So we have a lot of links out there. It's really easy to get a hold of us. And I will make sure I put all of your links in the show notes. He also has a VIP day offer. Could you tell us about your VIP day offer? Yeah. So our VIP day offer is one day intensive, one-on-one. And I will teach you how to employ this strategy in one day. We'll set it up. We'll get it launched in one day. And you get me for 30 days of support after that. And you can manage it yourself. Or if you decide that you want to hire us for done for you, we can talk about it after that too. So now what if I have a team? Is that for me and my team or just me individually? Yep. If you pay for it once, I'll teach you, teach you ever. Okay. Matt, thank you so much, guys. Look, contact Matt, check the show notes. You're going to have all of his contact information. He gave you his website and until next time, play big faster. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Play Big Faster podcast. 
Want more entrepreneurial content? I like this. Make sure to subscribe for future episodes. Already subscribed. I just clicked on it. Don't forget to like and leave a review. Share with a friend that needs this in their life. I think you need this more than I. Oh, and make sure to follow Cherie on IG at Cherie Speaks. And remember to play big faster.